The cold, clear air of a season in transition has the ability to clarify my thoughts. It pushes away at the cobwebs and lays bare everything. The tiny moments I can't let go of, the small pleasures of being at home with children, the feelings of shame, inadequacy, and perfectionism, the crossroads of my past. I like this time. I like the stillness and the bare beauty of not yet spring. I like holding the sweet thoughts and the solemn thoughts in both hands, jumbled together. Reading on these chilly mornings is my deepest pleasure, and I snatch every opportunity to consume a few pages of something satisfying and profound. I so admire these women who can make cohesive sense of their thoughts, put them on paper, and hold the world in captivation and discussion. One day, I think, one day I will be good enough to join their ranks. My writing will continue to improve so long as I continue to work on it. My life is a rich fodder for experiences and stories waiting to be spun into adventures and characters and wee bits of wisdom. I want to make the reader sigh with pleasure the way I sigh with books that move me. There's a looming obstacle in the path to authorship, however. An obstacle that has been present for me my whole life. It's usually hiding behind other rocks and blockages, masquerading as a fear of failure, a fear of shame, imposter syndrome, feelings of not-enoughness, a desperate need for control, and for me, the deep longing to be liked and understood, holy and for who I actually am. This obstacle hiding behind these things, that would be perfection, my friends. Somehow the goal is always perfection, and these other issues serve to deflect me from seeing the true barrier. My belief that I can create something perfect, and that will make me perfect. That perfection is attainable. In Catherine Morgan Schaeffler's book on perfectionism, which I have gobbled up in those stolen bits of time between the never-ending tasks that come with being a mother, she reminds us that the word perfect really just means complete or whole. We think of it as never able to be improved upon or flawless. She urges us to reclaim the word perfectionist to represent someone who sees the gap between reality and an imagined future and works to close that gap. In my reality, I am the goal. My whole self, the self that yearns for more, the self that isn't satisfied by the role society wants me to play, the self that knows there's a book or two lurking about in this mind of mine, that is the goal. Perfection can't be the goal. Wholeness is. What I think of as perfection isn't even the point. And all those things that I have leaned on as excuses, the imposter syndrome or the desperate need to be completely understood, those are issues to work through, to get to the root of. The self-compassion I can extend to myself when these arise in me, well, that's the medicine. Another recent favorite book 
is Enchantment by Catherine May. The whole thing reads like a dream and shows us yet another possibility for a way to express the tumbling thoughts in our minds. At one point, she talks about being forever pulled away from the interior. To be a creative and be a mother of children at home is to be in a perpetual state of being startled, pulled, pushed, and even ripped from the rich inner world of our thoughts. It is utterly impossible to be a perfectionist and be constantly interrupted. Yet this is how I thought I had to do it, who I thought I had to be. I imagined that I just wasn't focused enough or calm enough to rise above the interruptions, that I just needed one more hack, one more system, more money for childcare, a village to help so that I could be set free to create. I haven't given up the dream of a village, and childcare should be a basic right. But in the immediate absence of these, I must embody water in a stream, flowing around the barriers that would prevent me from being my whole self. I rise early before everyone else. I carve out soft places, jotting thoughts and sentences on index cards before they can evaporate out of my mind. I paint watercolors with the children, letting my thoughts flow out of me like water off the brush. I push myself to do instead of overanalyze as thinking for too long can create a prison of inaction in my mind. The peace and stillness that flows into the spaces left by the thoughts that have been allowed to escape are the ultimate balm for my perfectionist's mind. The other peace bringer is self-compassion. I thought I understood what that was, but it took learning the concept of already being whole that allowed for the message to seep down into my skin. The peace of my home can only be a mirror for the peace within, and that peace is a wellspring of acceptance, of comfort in the knowledge that I am enough. I can strive for more, take steps to actualize the world I wish was already here, but I can be complete while I do it. We are inherently good and inherently whole. The air outside is still chilled, but the house is warm from the oven and rich with the mixture of sugar and citrus. The days are creeping longer and this moment is perfect. It is whole. We are, all of us, perfect. <laughs>